chapter 10 begins a new part of the textbook. It's called part, part 4, The Economic Control of the Environment. And chapter 2 is entitled, Using the Market to Protect the Environment. The first thing I want to talk about, though, is a topic which appears towards the end of the chapter in box 10.4, which is called the Coase Theorem. I'll explain the name. It's named after a person named Ronald Coase, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics. Um, but I'll explain that a little bit more once I finish talking about the theorem itself. This is an argument which is usually used by conservative economists to argue that even if there are externalities, you actually don't need the government to regulate the economy. That you can get from what we called before QPI, the optimal, that is the profit maximizing output for the firm, to Q star, which is the optimal output for the for, for society, you can get there without government regulation. And this is a rather remarkable claim, so we want to look at it. And, and I'll, I'll tell you what the Coase theorem is because it's tightly related to this claim. So the idea is, suppose we start with a situation where there's pollution. In particular, there's no government, and the polluter can pollute as much as they wish. So the amount of output is Q pi, where the, the MNPB, the marginal net private benefit to the firm and its consumers, the MNPB is equal to zero. You will recall from quite a few weeks ago now that MNPB is zero when profit is maximized, or at least when net private benefit is maximized. And more or less, we're ignoring the consumers, and we're just thinking about profit which comes from the firm. So just to be clear, to, to remind you guys, the MNPB curve is this entire curve here. And what we had said before is that with no government regulation, the firm goes to Q pi, which is where MNPB is zero and where profit is maximized. We've also got a marginal external cost curve, the MEC curve, which shows the the marginal external cost to pollution victims. We know now, but we didn't know earlier in the semester, that MEC reflects, in some sense, uh, willingness and ability to pay to reduce pollution, or maybe uh, willingness to accept pollution. Now, those are two different things, WTP and WTA, and we only have one MEC curve, so this isn't completely reflect what we learned about value. But um, well, we're just going to go with this for, for, for now. We also learned at the beginning of the semester that Q star is a socially optimal level of output. It's where the MEC curve intersects the MNPB curve. And this, is where, this is where society would want to go. So where we ended things at the beginning of the semester was the firm wants to go to QPI, society wants to go to Q star. You have to call the government in to make the firm go to Q star. But this Coase theorem idea says, well, maybe not. So it starts at QPI and says, you know, if you're at QPI, the pollution victims are not happy because there's a, a whole lot of output. That means there's a whole lot of pollution. Ex, mar, external cost is going to be high. Marginal external cost here is also high. But this argument points out the pollution victims aren't helpless. Marginal external cost reflects, let's say, WATP, willingness and ability to pay to reduce pollution. So the victims have money. They have an ability to pay to reduce pollution. So in the absence of, let's say government's not going to do anything, the victims could approach the firm and say, let's make a deal. 
We'll pay you money if you reduce pollution. So let's think through the logic of that. MEC reflects, now it might reflect willingness to accept WTA, but let's, for the purposes of our discussions here, let's assume that it reflects WATP, willingness and ability to pay. So they have this ability to pay MEC to reduce, have a willingness and ability to pay MEC to reduce pollution. And that's that that's up here with the MEC curve. Now, how much money would the firm demand in order to decrease pollution? Well, the firm really is not. I mean, a Q pi, it's just getting zero MNPB, and a little bit below Q pi, MNPB isn't zero, but it's 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 low. It's way less than than MEC is. So the idea is that the the firm would actually not require a lot of money in payment in order to decide to reduce output. And the victims are willing to pay a lot. So suppose suppose there's a proposal. Suppose the victims come to the firm and say, why don't you reduce pollution uh, to here, to, to this level? Let me, let me give it a name, um, QA. The victims are willing to pay along the MEC curve for reductions in pollution. And the firm is going to demand payments along the MNPB curve in order to reduce pollution. So now it's not clear, it's not specified what the payment is going to be, but I'm going to claim that any number between the MEC curve up here and the MNPB curve down here would generate any number for the price in exchange for which the firm will reduce pollution. This between those two curves is going to be a good deal for both the pollution victims and the firm. In other, in other words, it's going to be Pareto efficient. In particular for QA, let's look at this, which is $3, and this, which is $7. And suppose that the firms and the, the firm and the victims made a made a deal to that the victims would pay somewhere between seven and three dollars. Let's say the victims would pay this much. And in, in return the firms would reduce pollution. Well, this this payment here is higher than what the firms require. The firms only require MNPB, which is down here. And it's lower than what the victims would be willing to pay. They'd be willing to pay MEC, which is up there. So both firms, both the victims and the firms would say yes. And so you could actually get the firm to reduce output from QPI to QA by having the pollution victims pay this much money to the firm. In the same kind of way, if you wanted to reduce output even more, well, as long as what pollution victims are willing to pay, which is MEC or less, is greater than what the firms demand, which is MNPB or more, then in theory, at least, you can make a deal. Now, I don't know what the price would be. Nobody does. It, it, the price could be up here. The price could be up here. The price could be in the middle. But any one of those prices is going to lead to a Pareto efficient change, making both parties better off. So then the question arises, well, where where does it end? Uh, how, how about how about going to here or going to here or going to here? Well, as long as the as long as the MEC curve is higher draw that is higher than the MNPB curve, there are Pareto optimal opportunities for decreases in Q, decreases in pollution. So it's easy to see that you're gonna get at least a Q star. I claim you won't be able to go beyond Q star. If you if the pollution victims try to get output to fall below Q star, they would only be willing to pay MEC or less 
in exchange for such a reduction. And the firms would demand MNPB or more. And now you see there are no mutually beneficial numbers. What pollution victims are willing to pay and what firms would demand, th those don't intersect. And so the conclusion is, and it's a rather interesting conclusion, you would stick at Q star. You would get from Q pi to Q star without any government intervention just by the private bargaining between pollution victims and the firm. So this is half of the Coase theorem, which says that that uh, that if you start at Q pi, you can get to Q star without the government. The other half is, in some sense, um, more surprising. Let me pause for a minute to do a little bit of erasing. The other half of the story says, suppose you have a rather unusual constitution in the beginning, which gives pollution victims the right to prevent anybody from polluting the air. Under that kind of constitution, the initial situation is not a Q pi. The initial situation is at an output of zero. The firm can't produce because it's illegal for the firm to produce any pollution at all. But is it going to end at zero? The claim is, no, it's not going to end at zero because the firm isn't helpless. The, the firm can't produce anything right now. But if the firm could produce something, then it'd make profits. And the extra profits that it could make by production is given by the MNPB curve. So the firm could go to the pollution victims and say, can we make a deal? I'll pay you some money if you let me produce and therefore pollute. Well, what are the victims going to think about this? Well, the victims suffer according to the MEC curve. Now we're kind of interpreting the MEC curve as a WTA curve, a willingness to accept curve. They'd be willing to accept payments along MEC in return for uh, for letting the, f the firm pollute. And you can see MEC is pretty low here because there, there's not a lot of pollution. In fact, in the beginning, there's zero pollution. So MEC is low. MNPB is really high. So they should be able to make a deal. Suppose that you have $8 and here you have $2 in return for moving to, let me call this QB, the, the firms would be willing to pay anything up to MNPB in order to get the right to produce. And the pollution victims would be willing to accept anything above MEC in return for letting the firm produce. So these two are consistent with each other and some amount of money like seven dollars or three dollars or this much or this much some some figure in between would be Pareto efficient both parties would be better off and indeed if you then ask the the next logical question what what, what about a little bit bigger than QB and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger well you can see that as long as the MEC curve is below the MNPB curve, okay, let's think. So what's, what's happening is the pollution victims require a payment. But the MEC curve shows the payment that they require. And as long as the payment they require is low, below the amount um, up here, which the firm is willing to pay, they should be able to make a deal. But you can see that, so, so that would argue that you get to Q star. You can see that you're not going to be able to get beyond Q star. Because beyond Q star, the firms are only willing to pay MNPB or less, and the pollution victims are now demanding MEC or more, well, I mean, they always demand MEC or more, and the firm is always willing to pay MNP or less, but now these arrows point in opposite directions. 
I mean, they pointed in opposite directions before, but now the the half lines don't intersect. And so there's no price that would make both of them better off, and so there are no Pareto efficient moves, and so there's no deal can be made. And so in this in the second world, where you started at zero, pollution victims have what's called the property right to clean air. Uh, with bargaining, you end up getting to Q star. So this is actually what the Coase theorem says. The Coase theorem says that regardless of the constitution that you live under, regardless if if you have a constitution which gives the property right to the polluters to pollute all as much as, uh, as much as they want, and so you start at QPI, or you live under a constitution in which you give pollution victims the right to clean air, in which you start at zero, you're going to end up in exactly the same place. You're going to end up at Q star. And the place that you end up is the socially optimal place. You don't need government. Now, this isn't to say that the allocation of property rights is unimportant. If the initial position is here at Q pi, the firm has the property right. And the flow of money goes from victims to the firm. Victims get poor, the firm gets richer. If, on the other hand, the property right, if you start out here with the property right to clean air being with the victims, then the money flow is reversed. The money flows from the firm to the victims. So if you're in this economy, you certainly care which one of these constitutions you live under because it determines which party, which side gets richer and which side gets poorer. But the point is that if you're an economist who doesn't live in this economy and you're just interested in the question, do you get to Q star? Do you get to the socially optimal Q? Then the Coase theorem asserts that you get to the socially optimal Q regardless of what constitution you have. Now, um, I, I entitled this uh, the Coase Theorem Box 10.1 Pro because this is explaining how the Coase Theorem works without criticizing the Coase Theorem. And in the next video, I'm going to, to criticize the Coase Theorem. Let me close by saying that, that Ronald Coase, who, whom the Coase Theorem is named after, um, uh, and who won the Nobel Prize, I think, uh, largely because of the Coase Theorem, uh, Coase himself was actually more sympathetic with the con side that I'm going to be explaining in the next video, not this pro side. He himself never called this result the Coase Theorem. Uh, George Stigler, another no, uh, Nobel Prize winner, uh, conservative economist, uh, called it the Coase Theorem. And uh, and Coase himself, well, uh, as a preview to the next video, let me just say that in, in Coase's, whenever, when you win the Nobel Prize, you uh, go to Scandinavia and you get to make a, a speech. Um, I think the economics prize, I think you go to Sweden and it's a, it's a speech where the king of Sweden is in attendance. And, uh, and these speeches you can find online all the Nobel laureate speeches. And Coase actually refers to the Coase theorem with the adjective infamous in that speech. Now, sometimes people these days are confused about the, what the word infamous means, but the historical meaning of the word infamous is something that's uh, well known and really bad. So Coase himself was not a fan of believing that the Coase theorem reflected the real world. So that's what we'll get into. Not only Coase's ideas, but other people's ideas in the next video.